Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, founder of The Hangar Project. Today we're on Savile Row with Joe Morgan, uh, founder of Chilaboran Morgan. Thanks for joining us. So um, here we are. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, having me down here. It's such a privilege. Uh, you know, Joe and uh, his team here at Chilaboran Morgan are absolutely doing some of the finest work uh, right now on Savile Row. And so, Joe, why don't you've got an interesting background. Why don't you just give us a little bit of kind of a primer on, you know, how you found yourself here? Well, it's um, when you look at sort of um, Henry Paul and um, Geeves and Hawks and Huntsman, you know, we're sort of new players. Um, I um, joined um, my old boss, Tommy Nutter, in 1970, and he arrived in 1969. So um, what, he was only accepted in Savile Row for doing the same quality of work. As of now, um, we do the same quality of work as everybody else, but we have this style element. Yeah. And he was like rebel on Savile Row, and you think, my goodness, are we rebels? No, I don't think so. We're totally, totally um, traditional gentlemen's tailors. Mm -hmm. But we do have this ability now with the craft to develop it and excel in it. Yeah. And I'm very fortunate here. We have a group of very talented people yeah. and uh, we're just developing our craft and now competing with the very best throughout the yeah. world. And, and Tommy Nutter, you know, I mean, I guess he's best known as Taylor to the Beatles, right? And really pushing the boundaries of cuts and of, of style for that time. And I feel like, you know, whenever you look at Chilabor and Morgan, I mean, it certainly is muted compared to what it was like back in the 70s. But I, I still find kind of a, an energy uh, and just a freshness uh, that is really juxtaposed against, you know, kind of the traditional British tailoring Quite. that has been done the same way it's been done, you know, for decades. Yes. Right. Well, I don't think there's any wrong with that sort no. of very traditional aristocratic um, design and make. But what we try and do here is that um, you know, if you look at the, the body and the, the gentleman, we try and give him sort of presence. And I think our, um, our model um, cries out for definition. And with our construction, this is what we give it. You know, we, we like our gentleman to have a straight shoulder line, a very close high armhole and then we cut it into the waist and we give a very sophisticated flair so it gives a very good image and uh, it does tend to make one sort of stand up just up a little bit more erect but I think you know within one's posture that's not a bad thing mm -hmm. um, and the whole emphasis you know from the um, the trousers you know, which we like to cut our trousers a little bit higher and give good lines to the waistcoat and um, so the whole jacket waistcoat and trousers making the suit our um, work for us and, and, our, and our gentlemen. I mean, you've assembled an incredible team here, right? How many do you have down in the work? Well, there are 10 of us, my goodness. Who, and we're yeah. growing naturally. And, yeah. and I'm just very, very fortunate. And we have this craft where uh, we don't really have a front of house. Whereas, um, you know, when people come in, they can see whoever is here at the time and they can just talk through their requirements. And that's whether, oh my goodness, you know, I would like something for a very formal occasion, um, or I would like something for a daytime. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have a team that can look after them, make great selections on fabric, talk for our model, or we do listen to our client. Yeah. You know, we would listen to, you know, yeah. we would say, you know, you have great thoughts on mm -hmm. design and with the model that you're wearing, we would listen to you. And I think that's really important. And, you know, when people sit in front of the mirror and they say, Oh, um, you know, what do you think of that sleeve length? And they say, well, could we shorten that a little bit? And I say, well, of course we can. Whereas there have been tailors <laughs> before, and they say, my tailor won't allow me to have my sleeves over this line. And you go, yeah. hold on, hey, you know, we listen to you. And um, sleeve length is so personal. We'll work with you to, um, to make it work for you. And I mean, the clients that come in here, I mean, you know, what do you think, you know, I mean, it's a certain point whenever you kind of commission a piece from a bespoke tailor, I really feel like you're commissioning a piece of artwork and that you're choosing a particular tailor because you know you like their style, their silhouette. You know, someone that comes in with like too specific of a notion of what they want, I feel like in some ways compromises or mutes, you know, the manifestation of the of the cutter, I suppose. So what is like, how does that go back and forth? I mean, you don't want someone to come in and basically hand you a pattern and say, make this, because that's not what <laughs> you guys are in the <laughs> yeah, business quite, of. Quite. But at the same time, people come in, you know, with their kind of predisposed notions. So, I mean, do you have a lot of back and forth with customers? I mean, is that um, part of the magic of that relationship? Yes, it is. And I think it is magic. Um, and because you know, when you, you look at our, our wares, our clothes, you know, without being silly, it's, um, there's a pulse running through it. It's really very important. It's not only my pulse, it's the, um, you know, our people here that work with all the ingredients. And, you know, we, we have, even if we let's talk this week, we had a gentleman that came in and had a top coat, he'd worn it for like 
15 years, this was part of what he wanted, he wanted just reproduced. So we just sent him away and said, look, just think about it, because I thought in your development to the next stage in your, your sort of career, it might be nicer to have a jacket, which is more useful, you can treat it as a, you know, a friendly cardigan, but it will just be just that little bit more stylized, and I think you could wear it just that much better. So he's gone away now thinking about that, which mm -hmm. I think is really pretty important. Um, and again, um, you know, our gentlemen, our ladies, um, I think they come to us for a reason. You yeah. know, I would n never have thought in my career that people would walk past some of the other tailors and come to us. I would never have thought that because we're in a basement area. We don't have a big brand, but the people that care about craft in London and the skills that we're bringing to tailoring now mm -hmm. um, come to us, which I'm very rewarding that. And one of the other things that's, again, quite unique about Chidor Bora and Morgan is that um, all the work is done on premises, right? You don't yes. send out that workers. Why yeah. do you think that's important? We've used people from um, from um, not in our location here, mm -hmm. and you do not get what you want, um, and it's a compromise, and we don't compromise. Yeah. And this is why um, we take a long time producing what we do, primarily because we just say, "Hey, look, let's take the whole thing apart, let's smooth it all out, and let's start again." It's mm -hmm. very important to us. As you've been in business, you, you have a pretty unique style, right? And certain elements that kind of find their way in, kind of across all the garments. You know, talk about a, a few of the things that you know that you do differently, and that you think really create a Chittleboro and Morgan, you know, piece versus you know something else someone may find. You Quite. Know. Well, we do. Well, you get drifts, and um, you know, when you get sort of young people that sort of leave university or they leave college, they have this sort of energy for street clothes. And you look at street clothes and think, oh my goodness, you know, these are terrible. What are these things? But I really believe in street clothes because I think the energy from them, um, each generation takes its look and this model with them. And um, it's not what we do, mm -hmm. but within that sort of concept, you know, things change. So it's, you know, we can't just say, look, this is our model and this is what you're going to wear because, you know, each generation wants demands from you something different. But traditionally, you know, gentlemen have their, like, their spring, summer, winter, autumn models. So we've got this difference in, in clothes and weights. And also, it's just once upon a time, you know, people will have like a day suit, an evening suit. And, um, you know, if you went racing or if you go to Henley or if you go shooting, all these models come out. Well, this is what happens to our gentlemen. So lots of people just want one suit that will can cope with that. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, within our jacket, waistcoat and trousers, we say to them, look, this is your suit. Go and destroy it, but within the meantime, you don't have to wear it as a suit. What I'd like you to do is wear the jacket with a you know, wide open neck shirt and a pair of cotton trousers or a pair of blue jeans, and you can lunch in any restaurant in London mm -hmm. or in New York, whatever. And the, the trousers, you know, they can stand alone, they're sort of like good on the hip, good looking, nice lines, sexy pair of trousers, you can wear those with, you know, like a, again, another sports shirt or um, a formal shirt. Young people go out now and they, um, they with their jeans and a white shirt, and they've got nowhere for their phone, their keys, their car keys. So they leave them on the top of a counter and they may get stolen or they forget them. So now we have a waistcoat that we feel that has a cloth back. It's part of our model. And um, you've got pockets for keys, car keys, phone, so you don't leave them around. So, you know, the basic suit, which gentlemen say, oh, this is yours, you can wear it as a suit, but we like to break the whole element down so you get three different sections that you can wear all the way through your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you know, help us understand you know, the, the beauty and you know, the magic that goes into the garment that one never sees, but that still makes that garment you know, special. I mean, well, that really uh, is almost what makes it special. That's very, you know. very, very gallant and very, very gracious of you. Um, the thing being, it's, um, it's just an everyday blue suit. And um, you know, you think, oh, okay, it's an everyday suit. Well, that's an everyday painting. And you're looking <laughs> at it in the National Gallery and you think, well, it isn't. And this is the same about one of our products. Um, the integrity of the make is what we're all about. It's the ethos of the company. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that. It's just, but you can go to all the other, again, the workstations, and they will tell you, this is how we work. And um, our fellows get beaten up. They go and talk to some of their contemporaries and they will say, why do you do that? Why do you need to do that? And we say, well, because you know, there are elements of this craft around the world and we're competing yeah. with them. That's really important to us.